everybody, it's Chris from ChristopherJ.net and this is phase one of my upgrade process to my Ibanez Artcore AM93 semi hollow body guitar and uh, what I'm upgrading is to add synth access and uh, this will be installing the, uh, the hex pickups and electronics from RMC pickups uh, these are the same pickups and electronics that are in Godin uh, synth access uh, equipped guitars. So I am going to uh, record what I do, and uh, if anybody else out there decides to do the same thing, you can uh, use this for reference or ask me uh, some questions, and I'll try to answer as best I can. So there's my guitar, and I just received. Uh, all of the goodies from RMC in the mail yesterday and I'll show you that next. Okay I got this box in the mail and this is everything I need for the RMC upgrade. It includes uh, one little uh, bag that has the uh, electronics module, uh, the PolyDrive 1 uh, module, and all the pots and switches and and things below that and uh, two different jack plates depending on what you want to use and then in a separate bag are all the pickups and along with that came a whole bunch of instructions and schematics and diagrams and from that I went ahead and made my own uh, wiring diagram uh, that's customized for the layout in my guitar and you have it right there um, and also a, a layout diagram for where all the various things will go when I retrofit this and being the manufacturing engineer that I am I had to write a, an assembly instruction um, for the whole job so that's what I'll be doing okay now you can see that I have masked off most of the guitar to protect it from my own clumsiness just in case something gets dropped or or whatever I don't want to damage the finish in any way um, at this point the step I'm on is to uh, I've already removed the um, the stock bridge and uh, stop bar and I've uh, set those aside the reason being is the uh, RMC pickups do not fit in the bridge from Ibanez because the uh, the bridge saddles are different dimensions so I had to buy a Schaller GTM Nashville style um, bridge to uh, put in its place and I discovered that the post holes for the uh, post bushings are different size um, the Ibanez ones are a little bit larger than the Schaller so I have to extract those and uh, plug them, redrill it to the uh, smaller size for the Schaller post, and uh, that's what I'll be working on next. So before I can do that, I have to remove the old bushings from the guitar. And here's a little trick that I saw online from another guy uh, who was working on a uh, tunematic type bridge replacement. and. Uh, this works pretty well. What you do is you take a, uh, a bolt uh, that is less than the depth of the hole for the post because these bushings are hollow and what I have is this little, um, this was actually a uh, exterior grade um, screw, construction screw. I had to grind the, uh, the head down a little bit because uh, it wouldn't fit in the hole. So what you do is you put the drop the, uh, the bolt down into the hole like that and then you put the screw the, uh, the post back down into the bushing and then you very carefully I'm going to try to do this um, without scratching the guitar. Now that I think about it, I'm going to put this camera on a tripod first. Okay, 
now that the camera is safely on a tripod, I can proceed with caution. Like I said, you put the, uh, the bolt down into the bushing and then screw in the, uh, the post into the bushing. And then you just turn very carefully. And as it screws down in, it pushes the bushing right out of the guitar. It's a press fit, so it's way too tight to do with your fingers unless you're some guy with vice grip type fingers. Like that. Easy as pie. And then just pull your uh, little bolt right back out of the hole and you're good to go. And then you do the other one just like that. By the way, I'll be leaving the uh, the post for the uh, the stop bar in place because uh, I don't need to change that. And Ibanez has a really nice quick change uh, stop bar. So you just slide the strings in, pop them in, you don't have to thread them. And I want to keep that. Okay, and the next step that I have on my installation instructions is to measure the diameter, the inside diameter of the post holes. So I will be using my nice Stumac digital calipers and I'll record it both in inches and millimeters. So I have 0.455 inches Make sure I'm zeroed. And in millimeters, it's 11.4 millimeters. I'll check several directions, several diameters. 11.78. Wow, this hole is not exactly perfectly round. Eleven seven six. Eleven eight four. So I think I'll take an average of those three. All right, I took three measurements of the inner diameter of the stock post holes, and uh, it varies a little bit depending on where you measure. Uh, so I come up with an average in millimeters of 11.78 millimeters. And the depth, um, I took the shortest measurement because uh, the tip of the drill is not flat, at least the one that they used. Uh, so the center is deeper than the edges. So. Um, the depth is 32.19 millimeters, and I recorded it there on my sheet. Um, next step is to fabricate the post hole plugs. And I came up with, because I don't have metric drill bits, um, the English uh, equivalent would be, or closest, would be 1764 uh, based on my test holes that I've drilled in uh, some other wood uh, to test the Schaller bushings in. So I'm going to go with that. Okay, I have fabricated my plugs, wooden plugs, for the post holes. And uh, I'm now test fitting the Schaller bushings. And these, I don't have them pushed all the way in, but they fit perfectly. And I had to do a bit of a drum roll for uh, post spacing. and the bridge fits perfect on there as well. So I'm very happy at this point. On to the next step. All right, now I'm moving on to the bridge saddle replacement step. There's all the new RMC uh, pickups, saddle pickups. I'm not sure what you call them. Um, I guess the official name is RMC Power Bridge G for installation in the Schaller Nashville Bridge, which is what I have. So 
So the first thing you have to do is remove all of the saddles, the existing saddles from the Shala Bridge. And it's a little tricky, so I'm not going to show you as I do it, but I'll show you um, generally what you have to do. I've already taken two out, and it tells you in the instructions there are little springs that retain the screws that go through the, each saddle. And you have to push down on the spring just enough to uh, take the tension off the screw. And then while you're holding that spring down, back the screw out of the saddle. Uh, but not all the way out of the bridge. You want to leave it in so you can put in the new RMC saddles in place of each of the uh, stock ones. So that is what I will do next. And the next step is to install the RMC saddles. You can see I already have one installed. Yay! And it's looking good. This is hard to do with only one hand, but the idea is that you insert the uh, pickup wire from the top. And I should mention, as you install each of the RMC saddles, into the slots, you have to make sure that you put the uh, retention spring back in the, uh, the bald spot, the unthreaded spot of the, uh, the screw. You can see here it slid forward so you can pull the screw back out of the, uh, the hole in the bridge so you can get the old saddles off and the new ones on. But when you put the new ones in, got to get that spring all the way back so it retains everything where it should be. Just saying. At this point I have gotten all of the RMC piezo pickups installed in my new Schaller bridge and routed the um, all the cables through the bridge pickup cavity. Um, I had to, I can't show you, I've got it screwed down, but I had to use a uh, my Dremel to hollow out about a quarter inch opening under the pickup ring and uh, add a shrink wrap to the, uh, the little cable bundle so it looks nice and neat. Um, I thought nobody would really question what that little black piece is there besides my arm will be in the way most of the time when I'm playing. And um, so it routes really nicely right through um, that pickup cavity along with the pickup wire down into uh, the body. And uh, now I'm removing all the knobs and uh, all the control hardware so I can rewire the harness, which is the next major step. Alright, I am back after having completed probably the most difficult part of this project, which was hooking up all the wiring um, to all the pots and the poly drive module and the switches and everything. Um, so it's all done and uh, I did it according to the, uh, the wiring diagram that came with the kit, which I translated for my guitar on this sheet. Um, Double checked all of the connections, uh, ohmed everything out, and it's all good so far. Um, I also added uh, some heat shrink tubing um, as a little bit of stress relief to most of the, uh, the connections, just for a little added reliability. Um, and other than the wiring, the other difficult part was um, probably for anybody is cutting into a guitar. So. I added the access hole for the 13-pin uh, connector. Um, the one other bit of uh, cutting that I have to do that really makes me cringe, but uh, it's got to be done, is to add the, uh, the spot for the battery compartment, and that'll be on the back side. Um, I can't flip the guitar over right now because I have all these wires hanging out, but I already have that marked, and I'll be doing that next. Actually, before I do anything else, I'm going to bring my GR55 out, hook that up, and uh, just verify that everything functions.
before I stuff it in the guitar. One important thing that I want to add is that after I completed the wiring hookup, um, I brought out my GR55 and uh, connected it to the, um, the poly drive module before I stuffed everything back in the guitar. And I'm really glad I did because um, I discovered that any of my existing uh, GR55 patches that use normal pickups, especially ones that had uh, either an overdrive effects enabled or um, we're using a high gain amp type amp. Um, there was a ton of noise, hum, um, coming through. So I spent a lot of time troubleshooting that and uh, the obvious thing that I found on the end was my uh, soldering station. I had left it plugged in and turned on over to the side uh, while I was testing this out and uh, the noise from the transformer was coupling into uh, all of these wires which act as a big antenna um, and that caused a lot of the problem but uh, along with that I uh, double checked all of my wiring connections discovered I'd left off one of the uh, uh, ground connections that's important uh, in my diagram that I made and that was the uh, connection from the master tone uh, pot case uh, over to the uh, mag RMC blend pot and uh, so I added that and I also replaced the uh, line number 16 from the polydrive module to the quarter inch jack um, with a shielded cable for most of the, the way and I uh, and grounded the shield connected the shield to ground uh, quarter inch jack. By the way, the original uh, plastic quarter inch stereo jack came with the kit. I ended up melting because um, it was really difficult to solder the, uh, the wires on. Uh, there weren't any, uh, there wasn't any holes in the, the pins on that jack to connect the wires to, so it was really tricky to get those wires on and I ended up overheating it and it deformed a little bit. So I had to go down to radio shack and buy a new uh, metal quarter inch jack. The good news is it actually fits right in the existing uh, jack hole on a guitar, uh, whereas the one that came with the kit from RMC um, was a little larger diameter than the hole that's in the guitar, so I was going to have to drill some more on that. So uh, I want to keep the drilling to a minimum. So that's about it. I'm about ready to uh, add the battery box to the back side and I still have to drill the, uh, the holes for the uh, S1 and S2 switches for the program switch and the, the guitar mix synth switch, uh, which I am planning to put right next to the, uh, the master tone and guitar volume switches, right where it shows there in the picture. Um, so now I'm off to do that. Stay tuned. Well, I finished the last of the cutting I have to do on this thing. Um, I drilled the uh, the holes on the top side for the S1 and S2 switches and uh, just got done cutting the access hole for the battery box which will go right there where that big hole is and it even fits nicely without any adjustments first time. I think I'm getting the hang of this. on to stuffing it all inside. I'm now feeling about the best that I've felt during this entire project because now I have everything completely installed, wired up, tested, and it works. Getting all the, the guts stuffed in a semi hollow body guitar and all the knobs up through the holes was a bit of a challenge, um, but I got her done. So that's what it looks like so far. Um, there's the 13 pin connector down here. I couldn't use the uh, the dual jack plate that came with the kit um, that included a quarter inch uh, cutout as well as a 13 pin cutout because of the uh, curvature of my guitar. Um, it just was too stiff to, uh, to bend enough to conform. So 
I decided to go like this. So next I'm going to uh, take all the uh, protective wrapping off my axe and uh, because I wanted to be sure I did not accidentally damage this thing at all so I wrapped it up pretty good. Um, so I'm going to take all that off, clean it up, polish it up, and install the new strings. Um, I bought some Daddario uh, NYXLs which people have been saying are pretty good. So I'm going to try those out and see how it plays. Oh, by the way, um, I did verify um, that the, uh, if I, I can't show you both at the same time, but the, uh, the program up down switch works. So I can go through all my tones. And uh, I mounted the uh, program switch closest to me because I figure I'll be using that the most. And then that's the uh, the mix and guitar select switch. And that's master guitar volume, master tone, synth volume, and RMC mag blend. And of course that's the normal uh, humbucker selection switch. So it's Works the same as it always has. Up for neck, middle for both, and down for bridge. So it's looking good.